but let's experiment a little with it and see what happens. What would happen if we entered a value such as 20 as our guess, or perhaps minus 5? We have asked the user to enter a number between 1 and 10, but they may very well try numbers which are outside that range. So if we try 20 and click the button, and we get the message saying our guess is too high. Similarly, if we try minus 5 and click the button, we get a message indicating that our guess is too low. Let's return to our code and modify it so that it displays an error message if the guess entered is not an integer between 1 and 10. This means we have two more cases to include in the if block. If the guess is less than 1, we should display the error message, and also if the guess is greater than 10. Let's check for these cases first in our if block. So we add two extra conditions to be checked in the if block. The first condition to check if the guess is less than 1, and if that condition is false, then we check if the guess is greater than 10. And if both of those are false, then we continue with the conditions that we had earlier, first of them being checking to see if guess is equal to num. So what happens if we enter 20 as our guess? The first condition checks if guess is less than 1. It's not, so we move to the next condition. Is guess greater than 10? It is, so the code is executed and the error message is displayed. Remember that only one block of code in an if statement such as this can be executed. When the procedure meets the first condition which is true, it executes the code immediately following it and leaves the if statement. If none of the conditions is true, then the else part is executed and we leave the if block. Our program should now work as we intended. However, you might have noticed that the first two conditions tested, we are in the first two conditions we are displaying the same message when either case occurs. In other words, if the guess is less than 1 or the guess is greater than 10, we are displaying the message. We can actually combine these two conditions into a single condition as follows. We have combined the conditions with the word OR. The effect of this is to create a new condition which will be true when either the first condition or the second condition is true. So looking again at our if block, we first of all check if our guess is outside the range 1 to 10. If this is not the case, then we check to see if it's equal to the number stored in num, and then to see if it's less than the value stored in num, and finally if none of the above are true then it must be greater than the value stored in num. So in this lesson we have used an if else if block to handle a situation consisting of a number of possible cases. In a later lesson we look at another method of dealing with similar situations. But for now, the if structure will be sufficient for most of the problems which we will encounter.